Hey guys, welcome back to Valley View Outdoor Living. You know, the, after the first couple of videos I did, I had some friends reach out to me and tell me they really appreciated what I was doing, but there's so much they didn't understand, and I, I get that. And so what I thought I would do today and, and for the next few weeks is kind of kind of provide to you what I wish I had seen when I first started, which was, you know, how to get started the best way. And, and what that's going to entail will be the actual use of the Weber Kettle. Uh, and Weber Kettle is so versatile, and that's what I like about it. There's so many different things you can do with the Weber Kettle that you can't do with other devices. I'm going to go over those things today, at least a large number of them. According to my wife, I'm going to show you every single one ever made, which is not true. I don't have every single one ever made. I do have a lot of them, but not all of them. So I'm going to show those to you. I'm also going to show you how the Weber kettle works, the concept behind the kettle, and the, the airflow, and things like that. So you have a basic understanding. So when you get one of these for Christmas, you can then go on and my line into my description and see all the different add-ons you can buy to add to it over the next year. So sit tight. We'll go over these things and show you how they all work, and we'll go from there. All right, back in just a minute. Okay guys, the one thing about the Weber kettle that's really neat, it has a really neat system in order to add more oxygen to the flame where you, you can actually heat your grill up higher or detract from it by closing it off. And there's actually a little lever down here at the bottom that allows you to do that. And this lever will open up the blades in the bottom of the kettle, which we'll show you in a second, and close it off. So if you're add, have any more fit heat and you don't have enough flame to your, to your charcoal, you can actually just open it some. And it's amazing how much the littlest bit will actually open up, when you open it up just a little bit, how much more fuel to your flame you'll get. Um, there's all the way open, and then there's all the way closed. Um, so if you'll come closer, you can actually can see in the kettle the way that it opens. As I open it up, you'll see the blades open up and, and the holes appear. And that's pretty much wide open right there. And you can also use it to clean, up your, clean the bottom of your kettle out. There's an ash catcher down here that catches your ashes. Um, but that's you know, it's a great concept here to actually add a lot more oxygen into your kettle. So we'll close it off. And like I say, this least little bit will make a huge difference in the amount of heat you're putting into your into your cook. So that's how the concept works for, for the Weber kettle. One of the first pieces of equipment you're gonna need is actually a charcoal chimney, just like this one. Um, this one's obviously heavily used, uh, but the concept's really neat. You put charcoal in, in the top here, and on the bottom, you put a lighter cube or something like that, anything, you paper, whatever you may have, to light the charcoal, and the charcoal gets grayed, and then you're able to use it wherever you need to. But that's something you want to get. They sell these at Lowe's. I'll put a link on my in my description as well for this. But they sell these everywhere, and you can get one, pick one of those up anywhere. Next is the grate. Um, there's a lot of different grates that are available. This one actually is what I call double wing, and it allows you to put charcoal in the kettle whenever you might need some. As a, if it's a long cook, you'll have the opportunity to do that. That's a very common. I think that the one that comes with the kettle might have just one wing or maybe even no wings, I can't remember, but make sure you get one at least with one wing, preferably two, makes it much easier. The other one is this grate. And I like this one a lot too, it has a lot of versatility as well. You're able to remove this middle piece. And we have a device we're gonna show later on that will capitalize on that hole right there to make some fantastic chicken and other different foods, but mainly chicken for me. Um, but neat concept, it actually does what you want it to do. You can use it as a regular grate or as a grate for the other device we're going to show you in a bit. You know, one of the biggest mistakes I see people making when they first start cooking outdoors is they get the charcoal lit and they pour it all over there and spread it all out and get it all evenly distributed and really proud of that. And they throw the burgers on there and then they're running like crazy, flipping those burgers, trying to get away from the flare ups and it's a mess. The way you do that, prevent that, is use these little weather baskets, these little charcoal baskets. You create what's called two zone cooking. You have your charcoal on this side where you can actually grill stuff and then slide it over if you need to or reverse sear it, put it over there as your ending. Either way, you've got two different areas, a hot zone and a cool zone. Or you can actually use two baskets at a time and use it for rotisserie cooking or a loin you may place on there where you've got indirect heat and kind of creating a, an oven, so to speak, with that dome there. Works wonders for that. But by all means, do not just spread your charcoal out and start chasing your burgers around trying to get away from those flare ups because they're gonna happen and there's no way out from it. So by all means, folks, let's just save the meat. Get you some of these baskets and save it. Save that meat. Next, guys, this is probably my favorite device I have. This is called the Vortex. It's a really cool concept. This is the grate we talked about earlier where I took the, the middle piece out. This Vortex just fits right down in here and you fill it with hot charcoal. Then you put your chicken, I usually do chicken, you can do whatever you want, but you can do, I do chicken, I do thighs, wings, breasts, whatever you want to put on there, and then close the lid, of course. And what happens, the, the heat comes up, hits that dome of the, of the lid, and kind of just mushrooms over onto the heat, onto the, the meat, and cooks it that way. 
it makes the crispiest chicken skin you've ever had. I love this thing. You can adjust the heat, of course, at the bottom, like I showed you earlier, with airflow, and get some really good high heat out of this thing that's directed right where you want it to go without burning it. This is a really cool device. Like I said, my favorite one. I used it just the other night to make some chicken thighs that were fantastic. So by all means, if you uh, get into this and enjoy it, that's something you definitely want to get into and try. All right, folks, this next device, for lack of a better term, is called the Slow and Sear. And it is the culprit for why I have a smoking habit to this day. Uh, this is what I got smoking with uh, initially using Weber kettle was a slow and sear. Really neat concept here. You take a handful of charcoals, get them in the corner, get them ashed over, and then for the rest of the slow and sear up with charcoal, put some wood blocks in there, wood chips, however you want to do it. Fill this trough up with water. Um, keep it right there beside it. Uh, put your grate on, of course, you'll put your meat on this side. What this does, it, it cooks very low and very slow. You adjust your vents in the bottom, like I showed you earlier, to where you keep it about 225, 250 degrees, and it cooks very slowly. So you have, you know, for hours, you can even have it going. Uh, so you can do a pork butt, brisket, beef ribs, pork ribs, whatever you want to do, you can do on the Weber kettle, smoking it using the wood chunks and charcoal. It's a fantastic job. The downside a lot of space over here. You can't do, you know, two briskets or, you know, two beef ribs. You can do two pork butts, typically. Uh, a few racks of ribs if you turn them sideways in the rack holder. But uh, as a rule, this is a, it's just small, one or two pieces at a time. But this thing's fantastic. I love it. Like I said, it got me into the habit of smoking. Um, and I think it's a, it's a really neat concept. So that's called the Slow and Sear. Now this next device I have just gotten myself, guys. I don't know a lot about it, but I'm going to show it to you. I kind of debated on it because I can't really speak either way about it. I've heard mixed reviews, but this thing is called the Fire Dial, made by Lava Lock. And Lava Lock's a good company, so this I'm hoping it turns out to be a good device. But the concept for this is you put it in here, and you're trying to disperse all your heat throughout. So you would spread your charcoals, in this case, all over the place, and it kind of tampers down that heat a little bit and allows you to use the entire grate. And that way you can just put it over. And so you have the holes on the sides for smoke and for you know, anything you want to do uh, for smoking purposes. But I, the thing I've seen most people do is chicken. Um, and I have a favorite tool called the Vortex we talked about earlier that I use for chicken. But this allows me to do a lot more, uh, spread it out a whole lot more. And so I like to try it. I have not done that yet. Can't speak good or bad about it. Um, but I thought I'd show it to you just to let you know it's out there, something to consider. And I'll, I'll use it over the next week, next few weeks, the next month or so, and let you know. We'll do a video with it and you can see how it works. But uh, for that's all I've got for it now. I don't really know much about it until I give it a try. Next, guys, is a rotisserie. I'm going to show you how this goes together so easily. It's very simple to do. This is the only device I have, guys, that requires electricity. And it, of course it would because it's got to return that motor for the rotisserie to turn. But you put it, slide it on the there, and you put your spit in. Pretend there's chickens on there for now. And just push the button turn it on. And it'll turn slowly. And that's where you use these baskets we talked about earlier, one on each side. So it has the heat coming in directly. Then you can put the lid on. And you get the full use of the entire dome, uh, and it works wonderful. We, we used to do chickens. Our family, we, we, um, we've raised meat chickens in the past, and we still have some in the freezer from that. So we loved it. It's kind of a win-win for us. So it, uh, it's a great device. does a wonderful job. It cooks perfectly, uh, and it, we, we're just real pleased with it. So that's the rotisserie, guys. All right, guys, our last device for the day is the Santa Maria cooker. Now, the Santa Maria cooker got its claim to fame by cooking tri-tips, and tri-tips got their claim to fame pretty much in California, where these were actually very popular. What's neat about them is you can raise and lower the grate to increase or decrease your heat level. Tri-tips typically a medium rare cut, and so this, being able to raise and lower the grate really helps with that, makes it much easier. In addition, you can actually use wood down in the kettle and cook over open fire, open wood fire. Uh, pecan or oak, something like, you know, post oak or pecan, either one, will do a great job, great tasting meat when you when you use that. Tri-tip's a fantastic cut. If you get a chance, never had it, please, by all means, get it somewhere. Uh, buy one, cook one, eat one at a restaurant, whatever, get one. Fantastic. You'll love it. It's very good meat. Um, but that pretty much wraps it up. My goal here over the next few weeks and months, guys, is to do a, a lot of different cooks using the different devices here I've shown you today, as well as our smoker and our, our, our Blackstone griddle all the different devices we have we hope to use. And, and even though my wife says I have them all, I don't. There's plenty more out there. Hopefully I'll show you some new ones in the time in this next year. Um, but nonetheless, we hope you liked and, and will like the video and subscribe to our channel. We appreciate any support you can give us. And until next time, keep on cooking, guys. We'll see you next time.